Hey guys, coming to you live from my house, and it is 1.50 in the morning. <laughs> this is about like the fifth take um, <laughs> on this story. I'm a little uh, discombobulated and everything, but I had some coffee, and I'm feeling a little tired, but probably won't be able to go to sleep until like 4 a.m. So I wanted to do a little story about my grandpa. Uh, I've been wanting to actually talk about this topic uh, for a little while, but um been you know trying to gather all the the words to kind of uh figure out how to how to express it correctly anyway um so a little backstory about my grandpa um my biological grandfather died uh when my mom was um a preteen i think he was kind of an unhappy person um and uh he used to be an, i guess he was an alcoholic and he was drunk one night, fell down a set of stairs, and, um, you know, passed away from that. And uh, so my mom grew up without a father for, until she was, like, in her mid-teenage uh, years. And um, my grandma uh, remarried a guy who was nine years old, younger than her. And that's the grandpa that I know. Um, so technically, my, my grandpa is my step-grandfather. But, um, so anyway, that's, uh, uh, who, who I'm going to talk about. But anyway, um, every time my mom, uh, took, took us to Japan, um, we would always go visit, um, uh, my, my mom's maiden name, um, gravesite. And the way, uh, graves work in Japan is, um, they have a giant tombstone with your family name on it. And, uh, if you move it, um, there's, there's kind of like a, you know, a pit with, uh, urns inside it. So basically when you die, you get cremated and you get added to this pile of urns that are your ancestors. Like when my, um, my dad's father died, um, we went to go to his ceremony and, um, yeah, like they opened up the, uh, you know, my last name's, um, grave site and you see like like tens of, of urns buried underneath that that uh, tombstone and it's a little um, kind of crazy but it makes you realize that hey like your your ancestors are, are seriously like physically buried there you know and it was placed there a long time ago and you know it's just it, it, it's kind of creepy in a way but uh, at the same time like that's that's the tradition so anyway my um Every time, you know, like, uh, we visited Japan, um, my mom's maiden side, uh, is buried, uh, in Itabashi, Tokyo. Um, it's where, uh, the third biggest Buddha monument in Japan is, um, it's called the Tokyo Daibutsu. And, um, uh, so anyway, like, um, last time I was there in Japan, this is January 2007, I was, like, telling my grandpa, hey, let's go visit the, uh, the grave site. I want to go pay respects to my ancestors and my grandpa was like really ecstatically happy about me wanting to go and so like we went um and uh i paid my respects to you know like the the ancestors there and then like you know on the way way home uh we visited the the gift store and the lady at the gift shop was like hey like you guys um you guys i really see the resemblance you know you guys look alike and my grandpa said uh, oh no, that would be a problem. Um, and, uh, my, what, what he meant by that was that, um, he's so unhandsome that he wouldn't want to inflict his ugliness to me. And so therefore, like, he, he would, he takes it as an offense that she would compare us. You know what I mean? Which it's like a self-effacing sense of humor that he has. He's very, he's a very humble man. And, um, he's trying to say that, like, he's too ugly to be compared with me, and, um, uh, but, like, at the same time, I realized, hey, that's true, we shouldn't look alike, because we're not related, you know, we're not, uh, I don't carry his genetics, and then it hit me, that, that grave site that we've been going to, with all those urns, I'm not related to these people, because my, my, grandfather is my step-grandpa he's I'm not genetically related to him and that all these pe pe people that we've been praying to or you know um, 
going to visit all these years for 26 years of my life, I never realized that I'm, I'm not actually related to these people. And it kind of threw me in a loop. And I, and I also realized that I have no idea what my mom's original maiden name was. And I have no idea where that ancestry is. I don't know where their, you know, grave is. So it just it gave me kind of like a existential, uh, you know, it's a existential dilemma. Like I just have felt like, uh, you know, the rug was pulled from under my, my legs and, um, made me kind of, made me wonder what my identity was, you know what I mean? Um, and so anyway, like it kind of, that kind of was, was a, almost a depressing uh, realization that, like, I'm not related to these people. But, um, anyway, like, uh, as, like, I stayed there for about three weeks, and um, that happened towards the beginning of, of the trip. Um, and what I re realized towards the end of the trip was, you know, like, my grandpa is uh, probably the most favorite member of my family that I have because he's just such a kind, uh, gracious, wonderful human being. Um, so sweet. Um, and, like, the thing is, he doesn't have uh, biological kids of his own, and so, therefore, he doesn't have any um, biological grandkids. And um, so uh, there's three of us. It's me, my brother, and my, my cousin, w one cousin. There's three grandkids that he has. None of them are biological to him, but, I mean... It doesn't make a difference to him. He's he loves us. <laughs> I mean, uh, obviously he doesn't understand. Like he doesn't really have the experience of loving somebody who's biologically his grandkids. But like, I think he loves us even more. He loves us more than our our biological grand. Like you know, <laughs> other people in the family. <laughs> but anyway, like it made me realize, like what an amazing human being he is. According to tradition, he wasn't obligated to throw himself into a situation that my mom and my grandma's family was in. He didn't have to care. He didn't have to love us. You know, he didn't have to love. Uh, I mean, of course, he loved my grandma, and uh, like he's got his reasons for that. But like, he doesn't. He, like you know, he and he lo he loved my mom. He loves my mom, um, and he loves us. And um, it does like you know the the. The blood relation doesn't matter to him. Um, and I, I know this is cliche. This sounds really cliche. And it's like a term that's thrown around all the time without a lot of thought. But it made me realize um, this, this is the definition of unconditional love. Um, and uh, like meaning like um, he loves us without condition. Like we don't have to be. Uh, you know, we don't have to be related to him by blood. And, and because of this, because he, he gave us such unconditional love, I need to regard those ancestors that are buried there as, as really my ancestors. It, like, um, I mean, traditionally, that's not how it works in Japan, I guess. But it, uh, this unconditional love is what causes um, us to transcend like these ideas, you know, of what ancestry really is. And so, I mean, like, you know, I'm, I'm sounding like a hippie or whatever, like talking about this stuff, but, um, you know, like the thing is, I think it's a topic that you don't think really exists. Like you see it on like, you know, the oxygen network, like after school specials or whatever. And you don't really like think that like you ever come across it in your life. And it's, and it's, uh, it's something that I was fortunate enough to run into, like, um, and I, I, I mean, I don't know, like, yeah, like, may, realize that, like, uh, because he, he had this unconditional love for my grandma and my mom, that I exist, uh, like, that I owe my existence to, to these happenings, these, uh, these feelings that he had, um, years ago, and, um, that's what makes him my gra grandpa, really. And um, it's it's a very big m misfortune that I don't have his genetics. I really wish, 
like because because of all of this because of all like um because he's su such a special human being um i really wish that i could have his, his genes um and um and, and if i have children i want to pass his genes along i really think that's a really big misfortune and greater the one thing that i could pass along as a legacy of my grandfather to future generations and for them to never forget who he is um, in, in our lineage is that is the, is the, the narrative of unconditional love. And um, uh, you know it's affected the way I look at relationships and life in general. Um, and you know uh, I'm not gonna get too like too much into my personal stuff, but like you know, um, like relationship decisions that I've made in the past couple of years, like, you know, are based off of this. So, um, uh, I guess I want to say thank you to my grandfather. You know, he's, um, and, uh, I, I need to let him know, like at some point, I mean, he doesn't speak English, so he's never going to see this video, but, um, I need to let him know that he's somebody who's greatly appreciated more than he'll ever know. In a world where there's so much family dysfunction and some men don't even take care of their own kids, uh, he came in and uh, didn't allow my family uh, to become one of those statistics. Like, I've learned something from him that uh, goes miles beyond um, having his genes. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, Sorry for uh, being a little choppy or getting a little emotional, I guess. But um, let, me, let me know what you guys think. If you guys had uh, experiences like this where, um, you know, somebody has shown you such incredible um, compassion and love to you, please uh, make a video about it and um, share it with the YouTube community because I think... Um, there really isn't a whole lot of this on on the you know YouTube world and internet world, and I think we could all benefit from from our private stories where uh, we see compassion, real life um, compassion. So anyway, see you guys soon on the next video.